Hi everyone, uh, my name is John, I'm based in Mombasa in Kenya. Um, we're going to be, as a team, we're going to be looking at the role of youth in community development. Um, I'll hand straight over to my colleague Nancy, um, she's going to kick it off for us. Hello everyone, my name is Nancy. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, Nancy B. Watt, based in Kigali, Rwanda. So Jen, kindly share the screen so that we can begin. Yeah, uh, today we are sharing on the topic of the role of youth in community development. Um, Dr. Muya has really done a great introduction here, telling us why this is so important. If we are to make progress, everyone needs to be on board. And one of the group that we keep forgetting at times are the youth. So today we are going to hear from them directly in terms of the work they're doing in community development. We'll have three participants. John will introduce them in detail. Who are we? Uh, we are known as the Umoja Nausawa uh, Network. This is a network of facilitators working on social inclusion issues across uh, the region. What we do is we support uh, organizations, groups, um, individuals in terms of the work on social inclusion. We have a model known as the model of oppression or the, the social inclusion model that we use to help organizations and individuals structure their work and thinking around inclusion. Um, the, the association has given us a chance to share this several times and we're happy to, to join you at any point if you need us to do that with your group. We do uh, also have a blog known as Embrace Everyone blog. This was just, uh, the, the idea behind the blog was having a space where we share information, global information in terms of what's happening, the trends around social inclusion so that we learn from each other, but also that when we have events, we have a, a library of resources where we can just go and say, oh, what was this on gender? What was this on disability? So it's sort of a, a library of, of resources. It's online and we'll share the link on this shortly. This is our email, umojanausawa at gmail.com. Uh, what we were requesting us to do this morning is to go to menti.com. We would love to know a few things about you. Uh, if you can just log in on your phone, or on your laptop, in terms of on menti.com. It will ask you for a code, and this is the code to enter. We have two questions we would love to hear from you. Uh, let me see if I can share this slide. Yeah, John, kindly share that, uh, that link on that number again as I share the screen. Can you see this? Yeah, I'll put it in the oh, chat. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, oh, it's up there now. Okay, so menti.com, then use the code 31337013. We'd love to know what city or town are you connecting with us from? menti.com. Wow, I can't even pronounce that. <laughs> Where is this? Peter Maritzberg. Uh -huh. So can you just repeat the code again? Three one three three seven zero one three. 737013 Thank you. I can see we have Kenya, Kilifi, and Maritzburg and Howick, South Africa. So you go menti.com, then you enter the codes 31337013. Thank you so much. We'll come to this at the end if we have time to look at where we all come from. We have five Maybe if, if, you, if you can't access the, the menti, just put it in the chat. That's also okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If it's not possible, please just tell us on the chat where you're joining us from. It's really lovely to see this representation, but it also tells us the quality of discussions that we will have because all this context will give us really good feedback on, on what our youth share. So we have South Africa, we have Europe, Africa, Pittsburgh, uh, where is this? Is it in South Africa? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah welcome to the group. 
uh, all of us. We have 14 answers. Now I'll move on to our next question, which is about, um, just a second. Um, one more in the chat, Northeast region, England, UK. Wow. And we had Malindi, Kenya, Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, Brisbane, Australia. Wow. Um, Nigeria, in the chat. Thank you. We have, uh, thank you so much and welcome all of us. I'm trying to move us to the next question so that we can have more time for engagement. Okay, so we yeah, were keen to know what questions uh, are you curious to to have respond? What would you like to hear in this session on the role of youth in community development? If you can just type for us in the chat as I sort my issues here. What would you like to hear about the role of youth in community development? Today, do you have any expectations from the session? Oh, and we had somebody from Burundi, Bujumbura as well. That's good. Most welcome. And I can see a group of people there. So that's nice. <laughs> With Under the name Porsche. So good to have you all there. Yeah, so John has to our second question. Do you have any question on our theme, the role of youth in community development? Please type in the chat uh, so that we can know this and try to address uh, these expectations in the session as much as we can. Do you have any questions or expectations around this session? The one so far from Fatima, uh, what previous IACD work in this area? Janine asks, how can we harness the energy of youth? Thank you for that. Any other before we move on uh, in the next moment? Finally, it worked a bit late. Yeah, uh, do you have any questions <laughs> on our theme role of youth in community development? Uh, the same code, you just have to click on the arrow for next to respond. Thanks so much for those who have responded on chat as we are waiting for. Any other? Question yeah, or one, from, from, one from Tess here. She says, "How can how can we engage the youth without exploiting them, wow, or them feeling that they are being exploited?" Interesting. Uh, from Thank Nora, you. Nora says, "What are some successful youth development examples you can provide?" That's what we're going to share today. Yes. <laughs> um, from Jim, how can young people challenge systems and structures that are restricting them? Wow. Interesting. So for our three special guests, um, these are good questions to think about. And for all of us. Yes, there's this one. How can we harness the energy of the youth? <laughs> yeah, I think... Melchiade, uh, how to engage the youth in community development according to or depending on their different ages. Nice one. I see another one here. How to make youth participation in community development meaningful. Yeah. And I, I think these are interesting questions because it's the same questions we, will, we should also be asking of ourselves, right? How many youth have a table at ICD? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. Without further ado, we'll move on to the next uh, slide, uh, but still keep these questions in mind when we, are, we, when we have our discussion sessions. Thank you so much. Oops, I think I've skipped one, but we'll come to that at the end. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll share again, eh? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, so that we save as much time as possible for the engagement. Thank you, John. So thank you so much for the feedback you've given in terms of the expectation. We are so excited. We have this representation from all over, um, almost most of most parts of the world. So today, what we are, what are we going to do? We'll have we have, we've had opening and introductions. Uh, we've also tried to understand uh, a bit about the 
the, the, the areas, the questions you have around this session. From this session, I, I'll pass the mic to um, John to introduce the, the different speakers we have. We will have the three youth organizations giving us an overview of what they do. After that, we'll have an engagement session where we'll have group discussions. Then hopefully get feedback from the different groups. Uh, the group discussions will be it, the three youth groups having three group sessions. So we'll have a session to just hear what the different groups discussed before we go to the reflection section, session. Uh, trying to move along fast so that we have time for all this. Um, over to you, John. Great. Thank you, Nancy. And, th and thanks again, everyone, for um, the really thought-provoking questions. So that, that should help us uh, really focus, especially when we get to our discussion points. And our special guests today are <laughs> Big Ship Organization, which is based in Mombasa, Kenya. Uh, number two is Center for Development and Peace, based in Mombasa as well, um, and Tamasha, based in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. So what we're going to do during this next part is we're going to invite the three representatives of those organizations just to, to give us a short overview of what they do, what they're about, um, and that should set us up for the, the group work discussions that follow on from there. Um, we're going to then ask you to, th those who, who wish to choose a group, you can choose one, two, three um, with the different themes, but we'll explain more about that as we as we move along. Um, so first up is uh, Bosco Juma. He's from Big Ship in Mombasa. So Bosco, over to you. Thank you, John. Um, thank you, Tim. A uh, bit overview about Big Ship. So, John, I believe I just need to do a bit of introduction, right? Sure. And then the yeah. presentation will come there after, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, thank you again. You, you, can do the, you can do the presentation at the same time, boss. Okay, then is it Not possible really. to share a brief of my slide? I know I have a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, yeah, if I can share my screen, I think. Uh, you should be able to. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and allow me to just do that right away. Yeah, and uh, just turn that. Uh, tell me if you can see my screen. Yep, that's great. Great. Um, I'm Keran Bosco Juma, and I work in Big Ship organization. And uh, before I say about Big Ship, I want to tell you a bit of a story that I think is resonating with most of uh, young people in the sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, we know when we have pandemic, when we have situations, uh, people need to think out of the box. When we had COVID-19, we had to look at uh, those things that we could not think of when we're in our comfort zone. So about 14 years ago, uh, just after high school, and the economic situations were hard, we were just after our post election as a country, and uh, as young people, uh, just after school, looking at what to do. And uh, we look at our environment, uh, there's a lot of that, the economy was down, and people are trying to recover. And that's when we were like, uh, as young people, what can we do to be part of the story in, in, in changing our country and our environment? And that's how we started waste management as an income, and as an opportunity to bring change to our fellow youths who are already wallowing in poverty. And as simple as that, that's how Big Ship became, uh, trying to solve economic issues and environmental issues. And we're like, let us bring the young people into the conversation of bringing change to our country and to our environment. And that's how we came to be. Now, from the slide that I'm sharing briefly, just a catalog that will help us to try and understand what is Big Ship. In the first image, we were doing a planting. Uh, there I am with our, our head of programs and the chairman of Kenya Forest Service. And uh, uh, a little bit about Big Ship. We are a community-based organization that works to create a clean and healthy environment by empowering, by offering socioeconomic solutions and innovative environmental initiative, whereby we are focusing on local communities with a special emphasis on youth and women and also implementing solutions to the underlying problems that lead to environmental degradation and poverty. We'll underline degradation and poverty. 
as we have said, we are located in Mombasa, Kenya, uh, working mostly in the Jombo South County. Uh, healthy, our, our organization is a community-based organization, as you can see. And uh, we do a lot of programs in the marine. We have ecotourism programs that are working in, 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 by bringing tourists to understand and just how a uh, move in the ecosystem, of course, without using engine boats uh, to save our environment. Our mission has been to promote sustainable development by empowering all communities through environmental conservation. So we look at environment as an enabler to sustainable development. Uh, uh, we have our objectives by working with communities in conserving and managing of mangrove ecosystem. Also, we are working in promoting best practices in waste management and promoting economic empowerment to the local communities through urban livelihood initiative. So from the onset of Big Ship, our focus was um, creating an income from ourselves and starting with waste management. And that's how we put that as our main specific objectives that we have been working on since then, 2009 to date. So most of the programs that Mangrove Big Ship is doing, of course, we're in the Mangrove Restoration, which is our flagship programs that we do and we are mostly known of. And of course, we have a, a very good skill in, in, in monitoring of degraded landscape. So we are currently lead in using GIS and tech in monitoring uh, landscape. And in the African Climate Summit, which is coming in September, we'll be exhibiting our monitoring skills. And of course, bringing young people and trying to empower people in how they can do technology, use technology, how they can use drone and GIS to integrate into monitoring of landscape, which is a skill we have been able to gather over time. We are partnering with community in restoration and also investing uh, in the community programs. Our waste management, as I've said, we are promoting best practices where we do creating a, a lot of awareness programs. We are promoting the circular economy and also supporting a uh, business aspect of waste, uh, trying to see that we create greener jobs. Of course, SDG 8 and SDG 11, of uh, communities and cities are really falling very much well into that. Uh, briefly about uh, the images, some of the restored sites, like the site you are seeing on the right uh, is a 10 year old site with over 10,000 10, mangrove trees that were planted since then. We have a program that we call Mangrove Walk, whereby you can get opportunity what to expect if you come to our ecosystem, uh, you get opportunity, a mangrove walk, you get opportunity to, to learn about a variety of mangrove trees, different species. You also have an opportunity to interact with wildlife within our ecosystem, uh, the different kind of fish that you can see. You have opportunity for hiking, given that our mangrove ecosystem has, is a little bit hilly and you can get opportunity to do that. Also, we offer boat ride and planting opportunities. And uh, yes, you can contact us. Uh, through the number on, uh, on, on the share there, but of course I'll be able to share this on our slides and also in the chat group. And uh, one thing to note is how are we really, really moving around in supporting uh, youth in the climate space? Uh, in terms of our programming, we are supporting a lot of uh, policy uh, engagement within our ecosystem and trying to see that we bring positive change to the youth. I think that's a brief as I can uh, put it and I'll be happy to respond to any question that comes in. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank, thanks so much, Bosco. And I've put the website for Big Ship for those who want to find out a bit more. Um, probably we, we won't have a long question and answer, but maybe one, two questions or comments, if there are, before we move to the next. OK, if not, we'll, we'll move on. Um, and just to say that if you want to have a more in-depth discussion about environmental issues and, and youth, that will be group number one, okay? So you can, uh, if, if whenever you're ready, you can send a message in the chat or you can rename yourself. Uh, oh, we've got a question for you, Bosco. So let's just take this one. How do you sustain the organization financially and promote circular e economy? How we promote uh, our sustainability for us comes in mostly through uh, our restoration projects because we do uh, sell trees in the restoration program. And uh, one tree we sell at $1, $1 and uh, 
most of our clients as well most of our partners in the restoration has been the corporates whereby over time currently we have been able to work of over 90 young 90 companies mostly within the our local ecosystem kenyan companies which they range from logistic companies uh, banking industry uh, even government agencies and we've been able to plant over 300,000 trees so through the restoration and the selling of trees we are being able to facilitate our direct and indirect uh, costing in terms of our programming over and above that we sell honey uh, which is a byproduct of our restoration work and also we do ecotourism whereby we have different charges for the locals and also for the uh, for for the international guests who come to to work in the mangrove work to get a boat ride and also we have program in the community which are participatory for example you want to learn how to do traditional weaving we do charge per hour for the locals and also for the international guests and also we do proposals we look oh we seem to Oscar, we seem to have lost you. To implement some of our interventions and others. Thank you for that. Sorry. Great. No, no, John, it's, it's still okay. there. you just froze it for a moment, but it's fine. Yeah, no but problem. I hope my response was captured. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for the question and, and uh, what, a, what an interesting. <laughs> Answer. I'm glad you mentioned the number of trees, 300,000 over a 10 year period. Is it 10 years or a bit more than 10 years? Yeah, 10 years, 10 years period, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, let's have one more question. Are all participants volunteers? Do you provide food? Yeah, we assist volunteers. We work with volunteers and we have a program which we call Voluntarship and Internship Mentorship Program. Or in short, we call it VIM, whereby we work with universities and learning institutions to bring uh, young professionals to work in our restoration work in different fields. It could be students from marine science, social science, and even administration, who actually have been very key in uh, bringing innovation and also sustaining our program, whereby also we offer not just stipend, but also opportunity for job, for, for job creation within our space. Thank you for the question. Thank you, thank you. Um, I don't know whether to take Abdul Aziz's question or not. Abdul Aziz, if you don't mind, could yeah. you put it in the chat and then maybe Bosco can answer in the chat so we move on to the next one. Thanks for that. Um, all right, so let's move on. And um, Bosco, if you could stop sharing your screen, you have, thank you. Um, and we're staying in Mombasa um, and we're gonna move to Shamim Juma from Center for Development and Peace. Shamim, over to you. Welcome. Yes, so my name is Shamim Juma, as you've all heard. Um, I'm working for Center for Development and Peace. Uh, CDP is a, a, a youth-led, women-led organization based here in Mombasa, Kenya, that is so passionate to engage the, the communities, particularly girls and young women in the society. Our vision as an organization is to enhance inclusion for sustainable development. Our mission as an organization is to uh, ensuring that at the end of the day, we have girls and young women that are a very key focus in our work to engage uh, in all uh, tenets of development. Our values as an organization is on synergy, our professionalism and uh, integrity. So basically our work as an organization, I hope my slide is moving, John. Can you hear, can you see it? Is it moving? So uh, these are the kind of work we do as an organization. Uh, we, we, as an organization, we work on different thematic areas, uh, issues around uh, CV, counter-violent extremism, um, peace building, women empowerment, particularly young women, Health uh, issues around sexual reproductive health rights are very close to our hearts, uh, governance and civic engagement. And uh, for us, we, we try our level best to provide a youth, face, a youth space for young people within Mombasa County. So basically, this is the kind of work we do with regards to, to youth engagement. Uh, this uh, co 
core theme sits just at the heart of our organization to ensure that we create a culture of participation among young people. And uh, for us, we feel that it's very, very important to empower this generation uh, so that they can be in a position to engage institutions and uh, decision makers, including uh, the county government of Mombasa. For us, we also engage in environmental and climate justice. Uh, we know that the climate crisis is increasingly impacting all of us. So uh, we partner closely with a big ship organization on mangrove uh, restoration project. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, we are on the right track uh, to ensure that we get to reach our goal of uh, reaching uh, 10,000 mangrove uh, trees in, in the Tudor Creek. So environmental and climate justice is also our, our key program as an organization. Then uh, for good governance on this particular one, uh, we've worked closely with a very unique group that is uh, people living with disability to ensure that they engage uh, the service uh, providers uh, in matters to do with public participation and civic engagement. For us, uh, we felt like uh, young people uh, living with disabilities have been left out in governance issues. Uh, so we felt the need for for engaging and ensuring that they get to, to voice their issues. Uh, one of the beauty about this particular project is the fact that you are able to convert uh, the different materials into braille and uh, audio for the, for, for, the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the hearing impaired so that they can uh, not just participate but effectively participate on governance issues. And last and not least is our health and well-being project. Uh, so as an organization, it's very, very important uh, for us to engage uh, young girls and young women on issues around health, particularly sexual reproductive health rights. So uh, we do this to ensure that uh, we get to reduce the incidences of uh, teenage pregnancies that are so rampant in our communities and ensuring that at the end of the day, the young girls and uh, young women have access to, to uh, sexual reproductive health services, including family planning and uh, uh, access to contraception that are largely considered a taboo. And when we have this engagement, we feel like most of these issues are not really talked about because uh, the communities get to shy away from these issues. And then peace and security, uh, this particular project uh, was born in 2016 when we were fairly young as an organization because there was need for young, young women to be engaged in peace and security work. Uh, I, I actually want to take us to the memory lane when uh, three young women uh, stormed uh, a police station in Mombasa. So there was need not to see young women as victims, but also perpetrators of of violence and uh, violent extremism. So as an organization, we felt, we felt the need to engage young women on peace and security. This is also in line with uh, 1325 resolutions and ensuring that women are at the core of peace building work. And uh, I think that is it from my end. Uh, this is just but our, our email address and we're based in Mombasa, Kenya. So you can also write to us at cdpinkenya at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jamim. Um, that's given us a good overview about CDP. Uh, can we have one or two quick comments, questions? I know you're all going to be fearing that I'm going to cut you off. <laughs> Yes, we want to move on to so we get some time in the groups. Any any comments or questions for Shamin? Uh, Karin. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. I just wanted to commend um, Shamim for the great work that she's doing. I myself have been working uh, in the youth uh, peace and security space in Kenya for the last seven years, and I'm currently um, pursuing my studies, um, focusing on youth engagement and the importance of youth engagement in the African setting, specifically in peace and sustainable development. So Shamim uh, Hongera Sana for the great job that your organization is doing. I just want to encourage um, people who work within youth organization and youth led organizations to 
um, persevere on and push on because their work is much needed and young people are an invisible majority in our community, but they end up doing a lot of the social transformational work that is required in our community. So thank you so much, Shamim, and uh, thank you for this platform. Thank you, Karin. Thank you for the comment. Um, another comment from Daniel is great interventions by the youth, very encouraging for the sustainability of community development. Uh, and a question from Janine, uh, from Janine, how have you engaged with men so that there is not tension between the genders? So as an organization, we also engage young men, but not uh, so much. Uh, so they, they're more of uh, partially engaged in our work. You'll find uh, most of the men are also volunteers in our engagement. So they get to really understand uh, sense of uh, engaging this other gender that has always been left out in the community. So it gets, it, it's more of just letting uh, the men know in the society that uh, we are not really engaging women because we are leaving out the men, but uh, that's uh, giving that sense of the fact that uh, uh, the women and the young girls have been left out and there's need for them to, in, uh, to be engaged fully. So we are, we, are, we are bringing them on board, but not to that much degree. And uh, they're very supportive. I like to say this, they're very supportive of our work. Uh, and you'll find young men, I think uh, John was in our workshop last week, you'll find young men training young women on sexual reproductive health rights. So we are not leaving them behind, but just to give that balance. Uh, Thank you. And that's a good question. It's a great question, honestly. And we are not leaving them as it's always seen that uh, the woman is being so much empowered and leaving the men, but you just want to, to have that balance. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thank you, Shamin. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're going to move on now and move to Tanzania. So I'll invite Dedi uh, from Tamasha. Dedi Mwita. Over to you. Yeah, John, thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me clearly, John? Everyone? Sure. Yeah, sure, sure. That's sure. very good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and try to share my screen then, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hi, everyone again. My name is Dedi Mwita, as you can see there. I'm the Training and Development Coordinator from Tamasha. Tamasha stands for Swahili words, Taasisi ya maendeleo shirikishi kwa vijana. And the words translate to Youth Participatory Development Center in English. Yeah. So a brief introduction about Tamasha. Shout to the development of their societies using participatory and appreciative approaches. So our mission, our, what we are focused on really is uh, to provide a critical youth perspective on all aspects of development and lobby for the inclusion of adolescents and young people as a whole and the most marginalized groups of young people in particular. So you can see guys, there is young people, young people everywhere, youth, youth everywhere. This is what we are, we are, we are really focused on. And that is our vision right there. Still, you can see adolescents and young people to realize their rights and their rightful place at the center of development. So the objectives will be quite similar to what I just said earlier. You see, to provide a, a critical youth perspective on all aspects, to promote the learning and capacity development, which is my area because I'm the training and development officer at Tamasha. So pr promotion of learning and capacity development is, is really, really my, my interest. And also to develop it, uh, to development a coalition for young people by bringing together and promoting organization working with youth. So what we do at Tamasha, we collaborate with other organizations which uh, work with youth here in Tanzania and outside of Tanzania. That is why it has been easy for us to collaborate with Big Ship, to collaborate with Shamimu in Kenya because they are doing similar work as what we are doing. 
those are our areas of implementation, youth and community participation, adolescent health. I think I will have much uh, conversations with Shamim on this adolescent health because they are practicing that in Kenya. Uh, livelihood and economic development as well, we are, we are, that is our area of implementation. And training and capacity development of grassroots youth networks. Again, training and capacity development. Also participatory action research through community animation. We have done uh, researches, different researchers uh, collaborating with different organizations because we have a pool of youth who are volunteering and who are employed in our organization. So whenever there is an opportunity to conduct a research, we try to uh, provide uh, these opportunities to young people to learn from uh, uh, more uh, professional uh, people so that when they work together, young people and professional people, these young people, they can, it can be a, a good way for them to, to gain experience and knowledge. Okay. So today, later today, I'll be talking about, uh, I would like to introduce these two organizations which we collaborate with which are working uh, directly on the matters of arts and uh, talents in Tanzania. One is called Art for Social and Economic Development in, in Africa, ACEDEVA, and that is their website right there, which focuses on dance, music, and theater to young people. It is a very known organization, uh, uh, a, a community-based organization where youth go there and they learn more about talents, or about dance, about music and theater for free. So it's a, it's a, an organization which we collaborate with. And another one is a is an art space, which is called Nafasi Art Space, which is based in Dar es Salaam as well. That is their website right there, which is a community space for visual, for visual and uh, performing artists. Uh, most of the youth who are, who are from Tamasha, our organization, whenever they show interest in, 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 in arts or in arts in terms of performing arts or visual arts, what we can do because we do not, we do not have trainers for such arts, what we do, we connect them with such organizations to, to, to ease the, their process of, of learning. Asante sana translates to thank you in, in, in English. Asante sana is Swahili for thank you. So, yeah. Back to you, John. Asante, Daddy. Um, so uh, once again, one, two quick questions for Daddy, and then we'll move into the group work section. Any comments or questions? Hello, everyone. Uh, uh -huh. I, I, you mentioned like uh, uh, organizations that you collaborate with, but uh, you didn't tell us about the your organization or what exactly your mission what kind of work you do for example the project or whatever you just i mean it's like connecting people with others i didn't get your point i mean um, so maybe you can explain more in details i think she just wanted you to say a bit more about exactly what you do um but at the same time there's a question from karin um who's asking uh, are there any changes that have resulted from the use of art? So maybe you could just try and answer those two very quickly. Maybe you can also answer this one from Scholastica. How does your organization help the youth in rural areas? And that maybe will answer the first one of this as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll start with, uh, with the first one. Well, uh, you know, most youth have talents and most youth uh, love art. So through their artistic abilities, they can express themselves creatively and they can use their talents to raise awareness about social issues and, you know, things about community development. So yes, there are changes through art. When art is used well and when it is nourished, when uh, you identify, when you identify some talents from youth and there are no there are no ways to development them then it becomes a problem but we as tamasha what we do uh we we have a pool of youth 
what we do is we connect them with these organizations which are which are uh, specifically uh, dealing with art such as Asedeva and Nafasi Art Space. That is what we are doing, yeah. Okay, and do you work in rural areas as well with youth in rural areas? Yes, we do. Like for now we have, we have a program, it's called Cash Plus, which we are working with UNICEF somewhere in Songwe, where we are, Songwe is, is a rural part of, of, of Tanzania. Uh, what we do there is we organize uh, trainings, facilitated trainings and provide uh, education or awareness on entrepreneurship skills to these uh, beneficiaries of the project, which is Cash Plus. Uh, it, it is a way of supporting uh, poor or uh, I would say not poor, poor is not the right word, but maybe marginalized communities in rural areas uh, to what, like to, to have skills on, to have entrepreneurship skills on how to use the support that they are given. Because at first it was the government of Tanzania was providing uh, cash to this to these uh, families or communities. But then later on, it was found out that the, there is a need for uh, providing uh, entrepreneurship skills to them before handling the cash to them. So that is what Tamasha right now is working on, providing that kind of trainings and workshops to the communities before they are given the cash to support themselves. Yeah. All right, thank you, Daddy, and thanks for the questions. We're going to move on now um, and go straight into the groups. Uh, so I can see one or two people have given me their preference, but otherwise I've just allocated people to, to different groups. Um, I think we can go for about 15 minutes, if that's okay. Um, and basically group one will have Bosco in it and you'll be looking at environment and youth. Group two, will be um, with Shamim in it, and you'll be looking at issues of gender. And uh, group three will be looking at arts and talents and youth, um, and Dedi will be there. Uh, what I can say is if you really desperately want to move groups, that's fine. Come back to the plenary and, and tell me I'll send you somewhere else. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to open the rooms and we'll meet again in 15 minutes and just get a little bit of feedback from everyone. Um, I hope you enjoy the discussions. Welcome back. We just wait for the others. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. This yeah, is Portia. Yes, uh -huh. it's Portia. From, I think we have around about 10 people or 11. Yeah. Oh, and fantastic. we are a community. Uh -huh. Champions. <laughs> Community champions. Yeah. So okay. our where, work where is yes. We are in South Africa, Peter Maritzburg. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. So when we have Peter Maritzburg on the map, it should have been much bigger to represent all the people there. Fantastic. Yes. Good to have you here. All right, wow. thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining us, uh, the team from Peter Maritzburg. I love the numbers there. Uh, just checking uh, on our reflections or what came up in our group, what stood out for you. I would love to hear a few comments uh, from group one. I think it was more reflection about the, uh, the previous presentation, like the, the group from Kenya, but I thought like it will be like a very general on the topic, but it, maybe we was misunderstanding anyhow, I don't know, but yeah, it was about more about the organization work and how they involve you, if I may understand correctly. Okay, thanks Fatima. Um, I wonder if there's a question you have there because uh, our understanding was these are the youth who are in community development. Uh, or did you mean you expected a broader global perspective in the group? A general aspect, uh, aspect, but we was all, again uh, 
just uh, giving uh, the the presenter was answering the people question so it was like extending the presentation this what what happening we didn't i thought like it will be like a general discussion on sub-saharan africa or how we're gonna but it, it was more focused on the case study you you present okay and we'll have a chance for Tima if there are any pending questions in terms of the general overview for sub-saharan africa uh, at the end of the session so that we can do that if you have any questions on that thank you so much any other questions or observations from group one did you also leave with a question of food for thought like fatima before we move on to group two uh, okay? uh, yes yes maximino say something uh uh, although I agree with Fatima, we, we the, the focus was on uh, understand a bit of more of the work of uh, 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 the organization from from Kenya, but I think was important because it provides us a context in terms of what are some of those uh, issues that I think is not only affecting uh, Kenya or Mombasa particularly. But also, I think uh, we can reflect in a broad perspective, especially if we have to think about what's happening in, in sub-Saharan Africa. I don't think only in Kenya we can find the issues that we have discussed, such as uh, 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 issues around destruction of, of, of mangrove, issues around uh, waste management. I think those issues uh, we find even in South Africa, even in in, in other countries, right? So for me, although the focus was there, but I think uh, we can all take that reflection in terms of what really is happening in terms of environmental issues. So for me, I don't think the discussion uh, was not uh, meaningful, was meaningful because we had 10 minutes and I think uh, we all had the opportunity if we wanted to, to really give us our uh, a broad or global perspective, we could, right? But uh, the focus was that on, on that Kenyan organization. But I think uh, uh, the message was there about what is really happening in terms of uh, environmental issues. And I think uh, uh, the presenter really gave us his um, uh, perspectives about some of the solutions that I think not only can have can 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 be uh, applied in Kenya, but we can also apply in different other uh, parts of the world. So I think was so very much. interesting and meaningful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maximino. Just uh, raising that some of these issues really resonate across many parts of the world, actually, not only Africa. Thank you so much. Good reflection. And uh, group two, any reflections from the discussions you had? We'd love to hear that. Yes. Thank you, Shamim. Please share. So, um, thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, basically, for, for group two, uh, on the role of gender and community development, uh, we made it uh, so open to, to gather insights from the participants. We are on five. And... Uh, Something that came up is the need to engage men in programs. Uh, Janine uh, gave us a, a classical example of how uh, important it is and the need to engage them. Because in some instances, you may, you may face resistance in programming. So it's very, very important. And also to design other roles besides the community engagement, maybe at the family level on uh, the role of women in in uh, family-based programs. It's very, very key because uh, I feel, uh, she felt like uh, there's just so much that is already currently being undertaken. And the need for inclusivity, it's also very important in terms of, uh, in the spirit of leaving no one behind and uh, the need for programs to have impact and also quality programs, uh, it's, also, it's also very important for, for us to come up with such programs instead of just focusing on the numbers. If we've targeted a thousand or uh, 50,000 girls, uh, but uh, uh, the impact is very less. And uh, one last bit is uh, gender for women is proper and uh, there's need for 
coming up with uh, responsible programs that uh, tend to to involve more of this because uh, one of the participants talked about uh, you know when they're basing gender they're basing it on women because it's always the load is more on the women than the, the man so it's also proper for them and uh, uh, because women are involved in different uh, roles and responsibilities at the society level so it's it's quite an interesting way of just looking at it but again uh, these are just some of the insights from from group two back to you nancy thank you thank you so much shamim you raised the issue of resistance and i imagine it can be really a big issue especially in communities where there is respect for the older people who have who are seen to have more influence and just a point to ponder not to respond on is how do you regroup as youth organizations, how do you gather courage in, in, in the midst of all this uh, maybe resistance? How, what form of self-care do you observe as, as leaders of these groups? Uh, just food for thought as we go to the reflections in group three. Group three, anyone who wants to share highlights? Please, please Arena. You are, yes, you are, Arena. And thank you for the opportunity to um, be able to um, to attend this um, seminar or a web conference with you. Um, we had an interesting talk about art in um, community development, and um, some of the attendees in our um, room um, noted that they use art to keep the youth um, busy. Um, in a way that they don't get mixed up with substance abuse, which I find very um, innovative. But from my side, I can also add that art is um, a magnificent tool to address various um, uh, issues in community development. Um, if I think quickly, I can think um, I would like to note that art can be used as a tool for um, uh, behavior um, intervention. Um, if you have people that strain properly um, to actually um, analyze the art that younger children create to see where there is trouble in the community, that is um, able to be addressed by early intervention. And then also later on, art can be used as a tool to um, pinpoint a trouble in community. Um, also art can be used um, to, uh, uh, to have uh, economic impact in a, in a community, for instance, cultural art, like weaving or beading, basket making, clothes, something um, that is uh, uh, owned to that community that can be used um, to also um, enhance the, the, the community's lives. So it can be taught from a young age. And I also see that as an asset-based um, community development um, factor, if I can um, explain it like that. And then also art can be used to um, convey important messages and um, uh, educate um, the youth, um, all the, the whole community, but specifically if you want to um, address a youth, um, you can use art to um, express or have them express their feeling, um, leading them with a specific topic. And also, when we think of art, we must um, put a very high stake on it because um, it is one of the things that enables a human being to think creatively. And by being able to develop creative thinking, you actually give that human a, a chance to um, uh, develop critical thinking as well. Um, Thank you so much, Irina. I think that's a really great reflection on the on the work that Tamasha is doing. Really appreciated. 
And it really is also part of self-care for our communities in terms of how we are dealing with issues that affect us. Thank you so much for those reflections. I think I request uh, uh, the different groups to give us one second reflection so that we close this session and take this back to John and Daniel. Any last minute, one second of final comments, Daddy? After that nice summary from Marina. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Arena. You 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 put it quite quite well. Thank you so much. And uh, I just want to stress on the importance of arts, everyone. It is very good to uh, nourish youth talents uh, leading to to arts because uh, sometimes you see. Uh, there are youth out there who have talents, but <clears throat> they are platforms. So it is good to help them or connect them with people that you know that can help them and also to provide awareness to them on how they can use their talents or their arts in community development for the betterment of themselves and for the betterment of the community as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for that quick summary. Over to you, Shamim. One second of final reflection. Yes, Nancy. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, uh, much appreciation to the ISD for giving CDP this opportunity to share our work uh, to other organizations and individuals in this platform today. And yes, we are looking forward to to other engagement in future uh, for the youth and by the youth. Thank you so much, Nancy, back to you. Thank you, Shamim. Please, John has shared the websites for all these organizations and Shamim, Bosco, and please share your email addresses as well for those who want to connect with you and partner with you uh, in activities. Uh, Bosco, one second of final comment or reflection. Uh, thank you very much. And I also take this moment to appreciate ICD and uh, all organizers of this uh, important uh, webinar and also giving us an opportunity as young people to just share our work and our experiences. It has been great, full of learning. And uh, personally, I'm really, really inspired to interact with my colleagues uh, from Tanzania, Libby, and also Shamin, and also be part of this great conversation. Uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to more engagement in this space. Thank you. Thank you so much. I noticed one hand was up, Jim. Uh, please uh, share your feedback, then I give this back to John. Thank you. Uh, Shamim and uh, Deda, please share your email addresses. I think Bosco has shared his. Jim, I see your hand is up. It's just a uh... A, a, a comment that um, would want to express that art actually includes music and there's some very, very important projects in the UK where uh, uh, projects based in, in really quite disadvantaged communities, uh, young people have been provided with musical instruments uh, and have formed themselves into orchestras. Uh, some of these children have gone on to to, to higher level studies in music, uh, but very, very important. And this was learned from uh, Latin American countries, uh, but it's called the big noise uh, and uh, the uh, New Harmony uh, project in Northeast England. But the interesting aspect of that is that in some of these disadvantaged communities, the, the research shows that the health benefit to the young people years on is hugely improved. And some of the health authorities are actually funding these music projects on the basis that less people will need to come for health treatment in 15 years time, which is really a lot of foresight, isn't it? You know, on the part of, of the health funders, that that's the way to see things. Uh, so it's just to add to art that in a sense, music and, uh, um, probably an, a lot of young people are interested in music of some kind or other, so it's attractive to them. But, but these projects are, are proving to be very, very valuable and very worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you 
Me, any quick comments or reflections? Yes, uh, thank you for this opportunity and uh, good morning to everyone. I'm speaking from Accra, Ghana. And uh, I want to say that I'm grateful to uh, for the opportunity to participate in this session. One thing, my biggest takeaway is the positive impression I get that we youth in South Saharan Africa are enlightened enough, uh, open-minded enough to be able at this opportune time to be discussing issues of uh, climate and uh, you know related uh, complex uh, you know themes you know even in the face of a lot of challenges very visible challenges such as um, unemployment and um, and perhaps uh, poor governance and corruption and those things my point is that Usually when we are talking about youth development, when we are talking about how to impact youth development in community development in South Saharan Africa, what the first themes that come to mind are um, employment, skills training, health, education, and those things. But for us to be able to, I mean, identify, uh, I mean, specific groups in South Saharan Africa, um, such as um, uh, 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 present, uh, those who made their brothers and sisters who made their presentations, knowing the efforts and the work that is being done on that front shows that, uh, I mean, in spite of all the difficulties, the African youth is determined to uh, look at all the issues because every issue is important, even though some may be more important than others. So from Ghana, we, we say that there's a lot we are we are learning from this. Uh, we are getting some mentoring from uh, Dr. Mia, you know, in setting up our own network for community development. And I think this session provides an eye opener for us. And uh, we hope that the um, broader uh, development community will be able to support this initiative of African youth to tackle such complex issues as, as climate. And because climate affects gender, and in Africa, gender is a subtle key issue. How do we treat women? How do we treat children? How do we treat the elderly? How do we treat people who are vulnerable and marginalized in our communities? In traditional community contest and even in the political contest. And so, like I said, it's an eye so much, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity and God bless us all until the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for joining and for the, for the depth and the wealth of conversation. I think it's fantastic to have the time to be able to look at this issue. Um, I loved the idea of the, the tech because I think for young people, especially tech is not so scary. Um, <laughs> so I think I've, you know, there's so many lovely stories that are coming out of Africa of young people developing apps for all sorts of things and doing amazing technology um, projects, which is fantastic. And then also the the sustainability focus of Big Ship I think is so important because we can create organisations, we can focus on on different programs, but if we are constantly relying on funding. That's where we come, we fall short. Whereas Big Ship has from the beginning, I loved the fact that you said we are making sure that we are generating our own funding. So that was another big one for me. Um, and the inclusivity of, of CDP, focusing on people with hearing difficulties, and also in our own group discussion, group two, we we talked about the other genders. You know, we talk about men and women, but what about the other genders in the world? Um, and from Tamasha's side, the, the idea of collaboration, because Africa is it's not one big country, but it's, it's, it's a group of many countries that have got so much to offer. And there's me talking from Ghana and Nigeria and, and Kenya. There's so much that we have to share. And I love the idea of us being able to collaborate and, and share with each other. Pumalele is asking questions about her art program here in South Africa. And IACD is that perfect platform for that kind of a thing. So thank you to everyone for joining today. Um, we just want to let you know that the next webinar will be focusing on the place of refugees and displaced populations. Um, that's the 29th um, ed edition of these seminars that we'll be having in July. 
And then also we are looking still for people who can give us any writings on the uh, culture and community development that we had before. We're looking for some more articles to put into our Practice Insights magazine. So if anyone has anything to add on that, please give us a shout, um, either to the IACD membership email or to Daniel. And yep, have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Thank you very much to John and Nancy and Bosco, Shamim and Dedi for your excellent presentations and for sharing your work with us. It was fantastic, thank you. And thanks to Jessica for holding the fort in the background and doing all the, the tech stuff as well. The recording will be made available once it's been uh, sorted out. So thank you to everybody. Hello. Thanks, Hello. Uh, I just want to ask you, is it, the, the, is it on culture? You said culture and what? Culture and community development was a, a previous <clears throat> webinar that we had, and we're trying to collect articles and stories for our okay. uh, Practice Insights magazine. So give, give Daniel Moya a shout if you've got something to add. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, and, and I think what we'll try and do is cook put the different presentations together and share with everybody mm. who, everybody who's registered. I think that's that's quite possible. It would be great. Yeah, thanks, thanks, John. Thanks, everyone, for the engagement today. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Go well, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.